Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Nai. I did some stuff last night. I mean, let me rephrase that. I did some stuff last night. You guys are going to actually see this stuff today. I, I put some effort in. Hello everybody. Right now in Isle Deckney, it's 12.04 p.m. on Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Now for today's announcements. We have a new friend in our island. Let's give a big Isle Deckney welcome to Bruce. Congrats, Bruce. I'm sure you'll enjoy island life here. Today, we have a visitor staying at the campsite. I hope our guest is able to see what it is that makes Isle Deckney such a special place. That's all for now. I hope you all enjoy the loveliest of lovely days. Again, she's she's got that, like, bourbon or whatever it is. I mean... Isabel is set for the day. The stuff that I did does not necessarily include the outfit that I'm wearing. Uh, let's go shopping first today. Oh, right. <laughs> I have no room in my inventory. Um, so yeah, today, uh, we're just gonna go mostly just kind of mosey along. See what it is that I accomplished. This hot item is an iron wall lamp. I could make that. Hey, Peanut. This is yours. I don't know what this is, but I have a thing for you. Um. Have a peach. Some peaches. Yum. I'm going to eat this so fast it's going to be rude. Thanks a bunch. Thanks for the fab prezi and I. I have something for you, too. Oh, hang on. Your pockets are, like, crazy full. It's okay, though. I'll just send it to your house later. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you. So, yeah, did a lot of, a uh, lot of money gathering yesterday. Uh, I upgraded the house. I figured it wasn't worth it to do a part two for the day. Just for something like that. So, we'll go back and look. So, unfortunately, I have basically no money today. Uh... But that's okay. Okay, let's see. We don't need black bass or any red snapper. I'm pretty sure I have a zebra turkey fish in the house, but I just won't sell it. Um, I may need that stink bug for Melba. I said I'd get her one, but I don't know if it remembers that. Okay, uh, reasonably sure we already have a microscope. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, the sewing machine and the punching bag and the, uh, what's that going to be, you think? A retro record player, I think is going to be the name. Let's find out. Retro stereo. Okay. Well, I will absolutely take one of those. Uh, let's check to see if we have any of the... Special flowers I don't currently have access to. Uh, windflowers, hyacinths, and roses. Okay, so no, uh, no special flowers today. And, uh, I'm not particularly interested in any of these. I guess I'll pick up the cute white tile flooring. I'm not interested in any of these. I'm just gonna go buy one. Okay. So yeah, yesterday was... I, I spent pretty much the entirety of the day farming, looking for stuff. Really just kind of getting stuff done for the uh, for the bunny uh, event. Because I really want to make sure I don't miss anything for it. So the big problem for me right now is that if you look at the bunny event... Uh, or actually, if you just look at seasonal recipes, I didn't get all the bamboo stuff, which bothers me. Because I would have actually liked to have all of this stuff done. So I didn't get all of it. So I'm really hoping to make sure I get all of the bunny stuff. Uh, there's also a decent amount of cherry blossom stuff that I know exists, and I've only gotten one of them. Uh, I think you get those off of... Um, uh, like, normal balloons. Uh, normal balloons come in every... Uh, oh my god, they have, a, they have a snagglepuss nose. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, normal balloons come in every five minutes. During the day, they come from the west. During the night, they come from the east. Let's go ahead and say hi to Sable. Hi, Sable. 
Kind of had to focus on this so I don't wreck it. No talking, only sewing. Uh, okay, just step away from the seamstress. Okay, let's go make some purchases. I, yes, I do need the fitting room. Okay, so what do we have? Oh, yes. I don't know. What, what am I... Do, do I like the charcoal? Oh, I like, I like the black. Yeah, that's the stuff right there. Okay, so let's see. Do you have anything in terms of... I, th I think we go for the Explorer shorts. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, we absolutely must have the police cap. Yes. Look, I mean... Are, are you guys seeing this stuff as much as I... Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Apps of freaking lootly. Let's go for it. Uh, anything interesting sock-wise? We can go from the Ultra No-Show socks. Sure, I can go with that. And, uh, let's see. We've already had the work boots, so I guess we'll go ahead and take the Black Slip on Lovers. Yes, I want to wear what I picked out. Are you kidding me? That's an outfit. Everybody needs Snagglepuss glasses. Okay, so there are some other stuff I want to pick up real quick, so we'll go ahead and do that. So, out of curiosity, do you guys, uh... Let's get pick up that racing helmet... Um, what do you guys, what do you guys look for in a leader? This was on my, uh, on my mind, just kind of watching, um, watching news recently, right? And what I'm curious about is what, what people look for when it comes to, uh, when it comes to leadership. And I don't necessarily mean, like politically or anything like that so we can let's just take that out of the conversation um real quick we, we, we can talk about we can talk about that in a minute we, we, we but it doesn't have to be a now thing um but we, we talk about leadership so you're talking about someone who is the head of a group um this can be your uh you know your D, D group this can be your um you know your raid leader this can be uh whoever you play with in call of duty you know, just the person who is in charge, effectively. You you follow you follow uh, not necessarily uh, their orders, but they're going to make statements that you are going to take under serious advisement. I think is the um, <clears throat> the major salient point here. Let's see. Yep, did everything I wanted to do here. So I'm kind of curious, just because I'm, I look and there are things that I look at, I look for in leaders that I don't feel as if I see a lot. Now, I might be, I might be picky. I, I, I think that's probably a reasonable assumption to make is that I am picky when it comes to the people that I, that I care to follow. Um, I think partly it's because I've been in leadership positions, and uh, I'm not going to pretend I was a particularly good leader either. I, I think that I learned, uh, personally, uh, I learned a lot of lessons that I think that a lot of leaders need to learn, and I also learned that I'm maybe not amazing for it. So we upgraded our house. We've upgraded our house five times, so we get homey sentiment. Z was actually laughing because I, I forgot that I had said this, but Z was looking at my um. <laughs> Z was looking at my at my title and saw that my title is Animal Relocator, and they're like, "Wow, that is probably the most honest title I have ever seen." <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I've I ran into a bunch of pitfalls uh. When I was leading uh Island Turtle Bug. Congratulations, we're a photogenic uh, photographer. Congratulations on taking your first photo. Uh, please do show off your wonderful photos. We have their impulse snaps or brilliant compositions. Uh, we have uh, gotten more miles for having a lot of stuff in our uh, catalog. Materialistic avatar. The powers that be have been tracking your turn of transactions. Let's just say you've harvested your share of the profits. Enjoy Nook Miles for contributing to the island's economy. Yeah, I made a lot of money off of turnips last night. Sass minus speculator. 
We doubled our money, so it's not tons, tons, but... Avaricious money bags. Uh, I've shot down a ton of stuff. So, Flying Paradise. Uh, I need to not actually hit the next one. I gotta remember that. There's a there's a bug. I think it's probably actually fixed today. I haven't updated it yet. But there was a bug that if you got uh, the final one of those, you'd never see another balloon. Okay. We have uh, built good relationships with more of our neighbors. You got keywords. Friendly buddy. I don't know how this is actually tracked. Lots of points. But I, I know that I ran into a fair number of pitfalls when it comes to being a leader. I know that when I was, you know, when I was trying to run a store, I was too friendly. And uh, I know that sounds like a thing that, you know, that you should be, right? Um, you should be friendly. You should be friends with people. But the problem with being friends with people is that, uh, I love that color. I'm looking at things like this as accents in my place. Okay, cool. Um, but, you, you know, you'd think that being friends with your employees... So, remember, you know, leadership is something that changes from situation to situation. So, you might be a, um, you might be a manager is one type of leader. And then we have our political leader and a strategic leader and a team, you know, a team leader and a coach. And, you know, there's all, there's, there's a tons of different types of leaders in every single type um, has different things that they have to run into. But one thing that I found is that at least when I was being a manager, being a friend wasn't necessarily, uh, something that you wanted me to be. Because the problem is, is that you get too close to someone, uh, and your, your judgment is wrecked. And it really sucks to say that. Honestly, uh, it really is not nice and not fun. As a person who, um, oh, hello. Come over here, pretty one. Yoink. Okay. Um, but as, as a person who, I, I like people. Like, I, I go out of my way to like people. It, it takes a level of effort to make me not like you. you. You have to, you have to try. Really? Okay. Somehow I didn't get the eighth hit. I'm not sure what happened there. But you have to put in some effort to make me not like you. At my local, uh, at my local gaming store, I've met a lot of people there. There are two people I do not like in that store. One is generally an asshole. Very, very full of himself. Keep in mind, very good at magic. So, I I'm not going to give him an excuse <clears throat> for being kind of a jerk. But he's very good at magic. He just isn't humble. There's no humility. Uh, and it it's... So, he he's very in your face about when he wins. Uh, not a very gracious winner. And if you just kind of acknowledge, you know, you acknowledge the touch, right? In, in the, uh, in, 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 you know, the fencing parlance, you know, you, you kind of give him his congratulations for winning and you kind of shake his hand and he's happy. Uh, but he'll, he'll lord it over you. And then if he loses, oh boy, you have never seen a poorer loser. And then there was another guy in a kind of non-formal event that we were doing. Uh, that got very upset at me for not following the rules. And it was a, ooh, hello. Dude, I got a punk. And you are? Oh, you're my neighbor. Sorry about that, I'm Bruce. Now, don't let the creaky exterior fool you. If I like you, I'm actually a nice fellow most times. And he wants it. I've got a lot of tidying ahead of me. Let's parlay some other time. Gruff. Okay, I'll check on you tomorrow. I, uh, we, we were in a very, a very, very informal, um, not even a tournament, it was just a, just an event, and, uh, a couple of people came to a draw, and in our store, uh, a draw gets you nothing, right? You, you, there's no, um, 
pick this up so you get the prize an egg recipe oh wonderful day oh wonderful you could this be your lucky item you better start crafting it lickety split if you want to find out yours truly the lucky bunny bunny day glowy garland i already have the recipe okay i'll give it to a friend um i think i have all the recipes just a matter of actually crafting them but uh, they they came to a draw, and in our store, a draw gets you nothing. You get prizes if you win, and that's it. Now, keep in mind, if, if you, every win is a prize. So there's really no good reason to draw. So most of us just roll, and we just pretend that that person won. Because if, a, if it's a draw, it's one win, one loss on either side, and you just, in the amount of time that we have available, you just weren't able to secure your final win. Uh, and... So that's presumably if you had more time, one of you would have won. So you, someone might as well win, right? Well, according to magic rules, you can't do that. You know, you, you, you don't decide a winner by a die roll. But we had a newbie, and the newbie was like, wait, what do we do? It's a draw. And uh, me and another guy were like, well, technically that means that nobody wins anything. But since that's not fun, just roll a die. We'll just, that's how you decide who wins. And this guy, now apparently he's a level 2 judge, so his his life is the rules, right? That is that is how he do. Um, so I put a bonfire out here. I'm trying to decorate the island a little bit. I'll show you the other bigger decoration I did in a little bit. Um, but this this dude's life is the rules, so he got on my case about it. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a hey, by the way, you should know that's against the rule and you shouldn't do it. It was, hey, we don't do that here. That's against magic rule. Oh, he, like, it was sharp and sudden, and I might as well have just killed a guy, you know? And that really struck me the wrong way, because it's, again, this is leadership. That really struck me the wrong way, because it's like, I, like, I didn't just commit arson. I said to a person, hey, you might as well get a reward. Is it against the rules? Sure. Should you be blowing up at me? Absolutely not. Um... I don't think Shatter's in. So, um, yeah. Only two people I, I can't stand. One guy who's a very, very sore winner and sore loser, to be honest. And the other guy is a, uh, is a judge who has no people skills. But what, what I found over time is that to a certain extent, when you're trying to be a leader... You don't want to be the friend. Friendly? Yes. Friend? No. Because it's very, very difficult to be objective when you're someone's friend. Uh, when you're when you're friends with people, it's very. Uh, here's the pyramid that we got. So I have that decorating the campsite, and I also put a you know I also put a cooking stove in here because you know you're in a campsite. You should be able to cook. Let's see who's in here. Oh, hey. This is B. You're on a camping trip. Do I live on the island? I do. This would be a great place to live. Everyone's as friendly as I am. It is an amazing place to live. Silent's such a good fit for me. It almost feels like I belong here somehow. Do you think that I could be true? Sure it could. Thanks for making me feel welcome, but I couldn't just pack up and move. I've got books lent out to neighbors. Oh, that's a shame. Want to play a game? If you win, then you get my gingham picnic shirt. What do you think? Sure, let's play. Want to hear the rules? Sure. Here are the game's rules. I'll draw one of four cards, and you have to guess which symbol is on it. The choices are heart, diamond, spade, or club. Guess right, and you'll win the gingham pick a shirt. Okay. Shuffling the cards. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's a heart. That's my guess. It's a diamond. Aw, oh, man. I'm sorry. I did not win a prize this round. Huh. I didn't know they still did those. Get the card again, shirt combo. Sure, let's play. Uh, I don't know the rules. Okay. I think it's a heart. I was wrong. Can I just keep on playing with you? Something about being here on the island is really inspiring to me. If I moved here, I'd get more poetry written. You should. Now I think about it, it'd be really hard to leave my home. Uh, let's go see if we can build another... Uh, let me go see if all the lots are spoken for. Because I did build three lots yesterday. Um, 
you can see them on the map. So the one in the lower right, it looks like two are spoken for. Maybe I can go build another one. Maybe maybe then B can move in. But yeah, you don't want to be you don't want to be friends with people. Friendly, understanding, people person. Um, yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of things you do want to be. You want to get to know them, but there. It feels like there needs to be a level of professional detachment, because if you're friends, you're more likely to make excuses for them, you're more likely to uh, go easy on them, basically you're more likely to do a bunch of stuff that you definitely should not do as a leader. It's You can be empathetic, uh, or, uh, yeah, you can be, you can be empathic, um, and sympathetic, uh, if you know, if you know them. But there's a certain point where you're willing to make excuses for a friend. Whereas you could be sympathetic for a, you know, employee subordinate, but still hold them to the same level of standard. Now, I do think that there are definitely pe people out there who are able to kind of keep that objective head when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to this sort of thing. And they're able to, even with friends, say that, well, yeah, you're my friend, but... Um, but I think it really depends on the person. I planted a bunch of flowers here. Uh, and here is my, uh... Here is the start to my private mountaintop bath. Uh, so we've got, uh... You know, we've got bamboo, and we've got tiki torches. There's gonna be a wall around it. No idea if that's gonna raise my scores, but we'll try it. Uh, but, you know, there, there, there are definitely people who can be... Uh, you know the level of detached that you should be. You know they can put they can put the uh, they can put the work hat on, right? And they can say yes, I you know I will I'll I'll do the thing. I think we already talked to Melba, so we'll go ahead and release a stink bug. Um, yeah, they, they they can definitely say you done fucked up, and I'm gonna hold you accountable. And our um. And our personal relationship does not factor in. And while I can definitely do that personally, I'm gonna feel bad about it. And it's less our relationship that's gonna stop, that's going to um, make me act weirdly, than it is the fear of losing that relationship. The fear of, um, you know, basically the fear of harming the relationship that we have is going to be what, what what causes me to do uh, stuff that I'm not supposed to do. Um, let's go ahead and drop a sand dollar. What did I get? A dartboard. Neat. So, I mean, I think a, a leader should be able to be, you know, personable but and friendly, but they, uh, you know, I, I don't, I think most leaders should not try to make friends with the people that they're leading. Because it's kind of kind of going to hurt that professional detachment. But you have to be friendly, and you have to be personable. You know, you have to be able to work with people. Um, you have to be able to listen. You have to be able to take advice from other people. Uh, you definitely need to be able to... Uh, here, have a dartboard. You definitely need to be able to uh, listen to people who knew more than you. I think that's one of the big things. A toilet cleaning set. Cheers. I think that's definitely one of the big things that I don't see in many of the leaders uh, that I hear about or that I work for. You know, I've read the exact way the phrase goes, but, um, here's my moss covered rock. There's a phrase that I've heard in the past that's basically like, you know, hire people that know more than you do, and then lead them. I, I can't remember the exact wording of the phrase, but something to that that effect. But uh, it, it's it's very much a statement of you know, your the talent you have is for leadership. It, it's for it's for leading. It's for telling people what to do. It's for seeing the big picture. And that's glorious, and that is, you know, that is what your job is. Your job is to see the big picture. But the people underneath you, whatever their job is, they should know more about it than you do. You, you know, you can help guide them to the best way to use it, but 
they need to be able to tell you, no, that won't work. And you need to be able to listen is, is more important. It doesn't necessarily mean that you change your mind. You know, you listening to someone telling you, I don't think it's a good idea, does not mean that you don't necessarily do it. It does mean that you listen. And I, I think that's a really important thing. I think, you know, I've seen plenty of leaders that, you know, they, they don't do that, you know? Um, they absolutely do not, uh, under effectively any circumstance... Let's see, Ankylo Tail, an Ammonite. We already had a Terra Body, a Trilobite, and a Mammoth Skull. We can also put, give all of this stuff to the museum. I might have more in my actual house. I gotta go check. But yeah, there, I think there's definitely... Um, you know, the, you need to be able to listen to somebody. So if they tell you, hey, I know more about this than you, and this is my this is my advice... You need to be able to listen. That's always going to be a thing. You need to be able to listen. But at the same time, though, there are going to be times in, that while in the narrow, short-term view, the decision that you make is not going to be the best one. Oh, hey, we actually have completed some of these. I think... Is it the plesiosaur? Nope. Off the something, something, something. That's the plesiosaur. That's not done. Hey, the office something, something, something we have actually completed. Nice. Dip, uh, Diplodocus. We have not completed. We're working on it. Hey, is that the Iguan Iguanodon? Dimitrodon. Dimitrodon's done. Man, we are... We're getting a lot of stuff done. We've gotten pretty lucky with a lot of our, uh, a lot of our stuff. Still missing the tail and the T-Rex. But hey, we did get the Iguanodon done. Nice. Missing a wing for, I think it's the Pteranodon. Neat. But I think, you know, so short-term view, they may indeed know more than you do in that this decision that you intend to make... Um, oh, Mammoth's done. Sabertooth Tiger is done. Megacerops is done. Megaloceros is done. Holy crap. We've gotten a ton of these done. That's amazing. Oh, I wonder, if you follow this line, let's just, I'm curious how well this is designed. Let's follow this line for a second. So this merges back to here, merges back to here. So does this all lead to... Ah, man, I was hoping it actually led directly to just the, uh, just the birds. But yeah, they may know more than you do in the short term, but you might be able to, as a leader, see the broader picture and be able to acknowledge that while in a short term their idea is better, in the long term your idea is better. But it may be that because they know more than you do about X thing, right, that their 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 advice is better than the idea you had. You all seem to be able to take that. That that's an issue I see a lot in a lot of cases. Um where, you know, people will hire an expert, but they don't listen. A weird do-yourself TV show. Made, I watch at 2 a.m. till we make this, so I did. Here's the recipe. Put the recipe in the bottle so someone else can make it too. Be careful when you do it. That's a joke. Elmer, a.k.a. do-yourself man. Orange hat. Okay. I think that's a kind of a major issue. Uh, you know, not being able to listen to someone that actually knows more than you do. So we have our we have our entrance arch, and for some reason I have a fake tree. Oh yes, okay, this is amazing. So one of the things I've needed to make my uh, my bunny day stuff has actually been the the leaf eggs, which is uh, what those are the the uh, tree based eggs. No, I gotta go make something else. And uh, we are now starting to see those show up. 
I've needed these, so I can, now that I've actually gotten a bunch of these, I can actually start making things that I want to make. And Peanut's fallen asleep. I think the, in the leaders that I have met, okay, this one's already sold. Okay, let me go see if we can actually make a new house, or if I'm, I might be maxed out as a thing. Uh, I room, okay. And a lot of the leaders that I have worked for, worked with, I think empathy is one of the things that has been the most missing. How much money do I have? Not enough yet. You know, and I, you know, I say that having said, you know, recently that they need to be able to empathize, not be friends with, but empathy is a big deal. Like you have to be able to understand where someone else's point of view comes from. Because for example, if you're trying to, you know, chastise a subordinate and tell them, hey, you know, you done fucked up AA Ron. You know, if you're trying to let them know they did something wrong and that they need to shape up, it's constructive criticism, right? Like, you're telling them, hey, you did it wrong, and you need to do it right. This is how you do it right. And this, you know, this is where you screwed up, and this is how you can do better. But it needs to be constructive criticism. And that's always going to be kind of a major piece, is that it needs to be constructive. But it's very hard to... Uh, come on, let me actually see it. I don't care about that one. Do I care about this one over here? I hear it, I don't see it. Nope, I don't care about that one either. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely very difficult. Um to do that job effectively, you know, to uh, give someone constructive criticism, um, if you are unable to see things from their point of view. Because seeing things from their point of view, that's not going to fix things, right? It's not going to suddenly become better. Uh, or less... You know, things are not going to be less broken when you see it from their point of view. But seeing it from their point of view makes it a lot easier. Damn, I needed that. Seeing it from their point of view makes it a lot easier to understand what they did wrong. And also to help them figure out how to fix it. No, oh, there's a peacock butterfly over there. And that's something I, I, I seem to miss a lot. Um, there's also, you know, I mean, talk about things that good leaders need. You also need to be able to articulate well. And that sounds like a very obvious thing, but, you know, I don't think it is. I've met teachers who can't articulate well. You need to be able to very easily transcribe what you see in your head to words. And not just to any words. It needs to be words that the subordinate or that the... Really, it's whoever you're talking to, right? But it needs to be words that they understand. So if you're, you know... If you're a Fortune 500 Oxford-educated gent talking to an uneducated hillbilly from the sticks, you should not be using them $5 words. You should be using, you know, simplistic words that they understand. Now, you know, don't talk down to... Don't talk down to this person. You know, don't be dismissive. Don't be, um... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Hey, chatter. Ciao, fromage. Let's chat. Another day in paradise, or as I like to call it, Isle Decne. I agree with you. You know what never goes out of style? Classic stuff. Kind of like the you got on right now. Don't get me wrong. I like to get real weird with fashion, but classic stuff is classic for a reason. Chatter's growing on me. But, yeah, like... You... You don't want to talk down. You don't want to be, um... The word's escaping me. You don't want to be belittling, right? But you do... You do need to at, to make sure that the... Ideas and concepts that you're putting across... 
are said in a way that the person you're talking to can understand. And that's just, that's part of, and, and that's part of the, the respect thing. Um, you know, the leader needs to respect their, uh, respect those that they are leading. It doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are right, but you have to at least respect them. And part of that respect is absolutely going to be, um, you know, making sure that when they hear you or that when, you know, you're seeking their, their uh, opinion or advice, that they are fully aware of the discussion at hand. Uh, we're leaving that turn up there because I want that turn up for Rot. Then we can get ants. Oh, hey, we're gonna get purple flowers. Nice. But they need to, they, you know, they need to be aware, and I think that, and that's that's also something I think that doesn't um, it doesn't happen really enough, is that the leader will just talk in a manner that is, you know, good for them. And they'll sit there going, oh, they're smart enough. Or they'll say that, well, if they don't understand, you know, that's on them. It's like, no, bro, that's on you. If you're telling someone to do something and they don't understand what you're talking about and therefore cannot succeed at what you're instructing them to do, that's on you entirely. It always is. So that communication is entirely on you. So naturally, I, you know, naturally I bring this stuff up, um, because of ongoing events in today's world. So as you can see, we now have, uh, we now have an additional room. We have a fourth room, uh, which is amazing because I have not filled rooms two or three yet to my, uh, to my preference. But that being said, I don't have the stuff I want. So we're going to have the main room, which is going to be this room. This room is going to be kind of a a living room style thing once i kind of see what i'm looking for um we'll have north be kind of a you know bedroom office sort of thing um so i'll get a bed that i want to put in there uh we'll have west be a kitchen east will kind of be a bathroom and then if they do what they've done in the past we'll probably end up seeing a uh an attic in a basement and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go from there and have those be other things so as you can see, I kind of got a kitchen sort of started here, but the problem is we, we don't have we don't have a stove, we don't have a range, we don't have there's a lot of things that we do not have to actually make this happen. So we're kind of uh, we're kind of sitting in limbo on some of this stuff. But you know, I look at I look at leaders and uh, you know I, I look at community leaders, governors, uh, you know, presidents. I, I, I've looked at a lot of these um, these folks that are uh, around the world. And as I look at these folks, I see a, a lot of these things that I've just identified that I feel are essential to good leaders. So not not optional. These are these are must haves. At least in my opinion. You can take my opinion with a grain of salt. Like, you know, you don't have to listen to me or anything like that. You Take my opinion with a grain of salt. But a lot of these things that I consider to be absolutely essential in a leader, I'm not seeing. Uh, let's see. I need to donate the Rajah Brooks. I need to donate the Seahorse. I'll just pull these out. I'm going to leave um, these in here. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is as I go catching things... Um, I'm gonna, anything that sells for more than a couple, like, maybe, maybe anything that sells more than 2,000 bells, I'm gonna put away for when CJ and Flick actually show up, uh, and then, um, anything that sells for less than that will go ahead and just sell directly. There's kind of no point in waiting on that, and I do need, you know, I do need cash flow to do some of the stuff that we do. But I see, I see a lot of leaders that don't, don't do that. On the other hand, I do see a fair amount of leaders that do. Uh, I think I was reading about what is it, like, Ohio's governor, who, uh, during the, uh, current issues with, uh, with COVID, um, one of the first things he did was get a good, well, I mean, it's not something he did for COVID, but, uh, he got a doctor to be his medical advisor, uh, for his staff, 
And this was the first person in, like, three or four tenants in that position who was actually a medical doctor. And that's that's that part of being being a leader, which is putting someone in a place of advisement or in a place below you that knows more than you do. And then, um... Oh, hey. I apparently have all of these. Okay, I'll go ahead and donate these. Um... And then, not only did, did he put this person in place, but then he also listened to them. So, when all of the nonsense going on with COVID happened, this governor listened to the person they put into place as an advisor. Now, I know that sounds like, like, that sounds like nothing special, but if you go look at a lot of the leaders that there are around the world, they are not listening to, their, to the people who, to, to the experts, to the people who know more than they do. They're just not listening. And that is a failure at leadership. That's really kind of all that is, uh, if you if you think about it. So, you know, he cl he started closing down his state before anybody else did. He shut down major sporting events. He uh, closed his schools. He did that before anyone else did, and he was being told that he was kind of being an idiot. And it turns out, no, everybody else needed to do it too. So he was ahead of the curve because he was paying attention to those who were uh, who were below him. I think something else that you have to have as a leader. And I think this may be one of the hardest things. Um, I know that uh, that I ended up having a lot of trouble with it when I was in a leadership position, and this is gonna this is one of those things. But you have to own the mistakes of your team, of those that you're leading, because it's it's very it's very easy as someone in a leadership position. To simply go, oh, yeah, you know, John Doe screwed up this thing that I told him to do. Man, he's a fuck up. You know, it, it, it's all him. He didn't listen to, he did not do that thing that I told him to do. Boy, he's stupid. It's so, oh, hello. The hell is this? Nope, come here. Oh, that's pretty. A Madagascan Sunset Moth. I, I'm always a fan of iridescence. Like, iridescence is one of my favorite things in color. You get something? Thanks for stopping by to say hi. Oh, okay. You are totes pulling off that flannel shirt. You're too fat, and I. Oh, right. But it, it's so easy. Um... As, as a leader to say, I gave this person an instruction. They failed to listen to the instruction. I think you only get one shot at those. But, uh, you know, I gave this person instructions. They failed to listen. They are a failure. It's on them. What's significantly harder is to say, I gave this person an instruction. But the way I did it did not make sense to them. Or I gave this task to someone who was unfit to process the task. Or something like that. It's And keep in mind, I'm not saying that, you know, a leader should take the fall for everything their subordinates do wrong. Absolutely not. There are times that your subordinates are simply not doing their jobs. They, they are not fit for the task. But I also see a lot of leaders who do not give... They give tasks to subordinates that cannot do it. So, for example, and I'm not, I'm not actually blaming my boss for this, but uh, the uh, work that I do... Um, you, there, there's, there's a program that I, uh, that I work on, and it's got several aspects to it. So, like, there's an as so it's a human resources program. So there's an aspect for... Um, nah, we're, we're gonna pass on that. Um, there's an aspect for, you know, just organizing your human resources and, you know, just organizing your employees. There's an aspect for teaching them things, you know, like I have a learning software. There's an aspect for performance and development, you know, giving them feedback, stuff like that. There's an aspect for succession, so on and so forth. There's all of these different aspects to the, uh, to the program. And because they're fairly complicated and kind of have a lot going for them, each of these aspects you need to get trained in. 
and uh, I've done a fair amount of training in uh, in this program. But there's still stuff that I don't know yet. So my boss gave me uh, a t gave me a client that was using an aspect of the program that I'm not trained in yet. Now, because I like to go above and beyond, and I you know really enjoy doing my job, and I really enjoy uh, rising to a challenge. I didn't tell my boss, I don't know this. I told my boss, you know, I said, okay, let, let me get to work. I'm, I'm going to learn this. Now, that probably wasn't the best choice on my part, but that is a thing that I did. It wasn't until later that my boss realized that when I started asking him questions about how this worked, that he said, oh, wait, you don't, you're not even certified in this. Why did I give you this task? Now, keep in mind, he didn't take me off the task because he is, oh, I like this room. He didn't take me off the task because he's aware that I'm very good with my clients and that uh, my clients love me. So he's not going to take me off the task. But if I had failed, that wouldn't really be my fault. That would be his fault. He gave me a task that I am not qualified to complete. So if he had then, if I had failed and then he had blamed me, that wouldn't be correct because I had no way to succeed in that task in the first place. I just didn't have the information. So that would have been on him. Because he, you know, assigned a task that his subordinate could not do. There are way too many leaders out there who will assign a task to a subordinate. And then expect that subordinate to succeed regardless of if the subordinate is able to succeed. And that's, and that's terrible. You know, that should never be a thing. Hey, Nook. Just like that, your home is another proper room. That's another upgrade to an even cushier lifestyle. Which brings us to the cost of the remodel is 758000 We'll get there eventually. As part of the home customization services available to you, you can now order replacement doors. Changing your door will change the vibe of your home, so I hope you give it a try sometime. Might have to remodel my home again. Anything in here? Uh, I, ooh, I'll take iron nuggets. Okay, let's go see what's uh, what's over here first. Okay, so what do we got in Nook Miles today? A spiky fence. And a vertical board fence. Let's have to check our, our mail, because I did order a uh, a lighthouse. So I'll have to check on that sometime soon. But I, I see a lot of leaders who don't do that. I see a lot of leaders that blame the subordinates when they should be blaming themselves for literally not doing it right. And, you know, like, that's, that's terrible. I think I already ordered those. But it, it's definitely not a good thing to blame a subordinate for something that, let's be fair, is your fault. I see it happen a lot. So kind of all the all the things that I've I've talked about, like are things that I've seen local, state, and world leaders absolutely fail at recently. Not all in the same individual, but as kind of a a, a collective issue, I've seen people failing at these a lot. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, because I have a lot of stuff in my... Oh, my God. Okay. Behold, my piece inspired by the peacock butterfly is at last finished. I worked tirelessly to capture its likeness for you, and I hope you enjoy it. May it bring bugs even further into your heart. Flick the arthropod artiste. Okay, we'll go take a look at that in a minute. Okay, Nook Mileage Program. We wish to express our gratitude for your continued use of the Nook Stop and the Nook Mileage Program. The item you claim via our redemption service is attached to this message. So that should be my lighthouse. Okay, a bunch of Nook Shopping stuff. Happy Home Academy giving me a thing for having an extra room. There's nothing like a refreshing bathroom where you can de-stress. Yeah, see, there's saying it should be a bathroom. I agree. Uh, there's stuff in my storage. Oh, a new resident moved to a... Okay, so we get a thousand miles if we get a new resident for the stuff that we did. What kind of workout routine is your house doing? Or are you pouring protein shakes in on the siding? Because I can't believe how swole your place is getting. Here's a little house warm-up gift. 
built like a house spoon. Apparently, I am Captain Nye. Okay, let's see. So this is my peacock butterfly model. We'll go take a look at that in a second. That's my lighthouse. Happy Home Academy gave me a long bathtub. Neat. And Boone gave me a bidet. Ooh, it's like they want me to get a bathroom set up. Let's go take a look at a couple things. <sighs> I just, I, I see leaders doing these things, and it's one of those things that I'm sitting here going, I understand because I was there. I have done some of this stuff. And that's not even, whoops. That's not even to say, like, I'm not saying that I've been a governor or I've been a president, but I have run a business. I have run teams. I have, you know, led events. I have been, you know, I've been the leading character in a D&D &D game. I've, you know, helped run, uh, you know, video games. I have done, I've done a bunch of stuff. And while it's not necessarily the same thing, and believe me, I understand that, a lot of the skills are transferable. So I sit here and I go, why are you making these decisions? Why are you, why are you setting people up to fail? What you're, you know, you're not giving people uh, the information that they require. You know, sometimes you know, some of this is you're, you're not telling people enough. And if people do not, you know, nice. If people don't have information, they can't make proper decisions. So you can't, you know... Oh, is this a floor-based thing? Oh, nice. Oh, I like that. But it, it's one of those things. If you, if you don't... Ah, the iridescence doesn't quite work in here. Oh, that's... Uh, oh, wait, there it is. Ooh. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. That feels good. That's why I wanted that particular model. Um, but if you don't, uh, if you don't tell people things, they're not going to be able to make the proper decisions, and then you can't blame them when they don't make the proper decisions, because you didn't tell people things. It, it's, it's, it drives me nuts, because I sit here and I think, you know, this is a thing going on that you caused. And you don't want to solve it. I get brought up some of this because I was talking to a immediate family member about an extended family member. Extended family member has a son who graduates this year. And of course, because of events, there's going to be no graduation ceremony. And my, and you know, they were going, well, why can't we have a graduation ceremony? You know, it's not fair to him. He's done all this work, and he doesn't get to have a ceremony. And it's like, well, yes, there's a reason why. Well, and so immediate family member was making fun of extended family member for not, you know, understanding. And I said, well, but you got to understand, this extended family member is in Florida. And in Florida, uh... Their leadership was not telling them to take coronavirus seriously. You know, like they they were very much playing off um, the coronavirus. So if your leadership tells you this is not a big deal, don't worry about it. Of course, you're going to act like this is not a big deal. Don't worry about it. If your leadership tells you this is a big deal, you should take this seriously, you're going to act like a big deal and you're going to take it seriously. That is, that's just simply how it is, you know? Come here, you. Um, but that, that's just how, how this is. It's, you know, a good subordinate listens to what, you know, what the leader says and acts accordingly. So if your leader tells you take it seriously, you're going to take it seriously. If they say don't take it seriously, you're not going to take it seriously. You can't blame the subordinate. And when I say subordinate, I just mean whoever's below the leader. So if it's a if it's a governor saying something, a subordinate is a citizen. If it's the president, it's a citizen. If it's a manager, it's the worker. Um, that, so I'm, I'm just using that terminology that way. But you can't blame a subordinate for listening to their leader. 
Again, if the leader communicates badly, if the leader gives the wrong information and a failure happens, it's the leader's fault. What I was, uh, what I was told, you know, what the, the, the kind of argument was that, um, the kind of argument that I heard, oh, I don't have the bells, oh, okay, hold on, let me get 10,000, hold on, oh, let, let's hold a ceremony. So let's go ahead and sell, uh, celebrate the campsite. But what I was told is that this person, this extended family member, should have had better critical thinking skills. And, you know, I thought about that for a second. And I went, no. Their leadership is telling them information. They are making decisions based on information. You, critical thinking skills does not allow you to make decisions with information you don't have. Or information contrary to what you have. Our friendly res res representative, anything to add? We're amazing. Me and my Beagle Plus classes. Everyone, please get ready to join me and bring the ceremony to a close. Oh, we're absolutely taking a commemorative photo. Poor Boone, we're barely gonna get to see him. Hooray! This includes our ceremony. We're we're getting such an eclectic and interesting group of people. Have you noticed? Hold on, we got another ceremony to go do. We gotta celebrate the opening of the tailor shop. Actually, I actually need to remember to take a picture of the uh, of the emote flag so I can show show it to the the artist that made it for me. Yep, let's celebrate the grand opening of the tailor shop. Let's do it. So yeah, today has been all about leadership, so... <clears throat> oh, poor Sable. Doesn't want to meet anybody's eyes. We got our brand new tailors. Yay! See, she's so cute when she's smiling. Thanks to everybody's tireless efforts, Isle Decti is developing wonderfully. At this time, we'll have some brief comments from Mabel and Sable, who are running the tailor shop. Ladies, would be so kind. Thanks to everybody, we've been able to open such a lovely shop here. I'll work hard with my sister Sable to make a nice place for y'all to visit, so be sure to stop by. Yes, please stop by. Mabel Sable, thank you both so much. Next, a few words from someone who made many valuable contributions that said the tailor shop could be built. Take it away, me. Anything to add? Ooh. Thank you for your heartfelt and encouraging sentiments. Everyone, please get ready to join me and bring the sermon to a close. Let's get ready for our photo. Unfortunately, we got people who still don't get to be seen in the photo. Hooray! This concludes our ceremony. Okay, let's go. Let's go build another house so we can get B in. I might build more than one house because uh, we have the money. And then I'll see. I probably want to add something else to the island. But yeah, so uh, you know, concerning concerning leadership, what I do want to hear from you guys is what makes a good leader for you. So you know, for those of you who have only ever been, um, you know, I I, I don't want to say a follower because that's not really what I mean. But for those of you who have who have never been in a leadership position, what what defines a leader to you? You know, what makes a good leader? What do you look for? I think I'm going to go ahead and get the recipe for a spiky fence. So what defines a good leader for you? What what do you want your boss to be? What do you want your, you know, your your mayor, your governor? What makes them good? What 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 would make you happy? You know, this and this also applies, you know, this for for Americans, it's an election year. Um what what defines the president you want to vote for so you know i'm not necessarily talking about which which candidate are you going to vote for um so let's let's not 
necessarily go that far in the in the political uh in the politics here but what i do want to hear again is not necessarily um which one but what traits do you want to see in the person that you're going to elect and for those of you who have been in a leadership position and again there's all kinds of leadership positions so we're not just saying someone who has been a manager who has actually been elected but for those of you who have actually been in a leadership position, what has made you successful? Uh, what what could you have done better? Uh, I think these are very important questions, especially you know we, we, you know a, a leaders have to be introspective as well. So you know what what traits do you think you should have had? You know I I love to hear all of this from people who have also been in that position because unfortunately a lot of my uh, a lot of my contemporaries have not been. Uh, I do have a specific store manager who uh, he and I chit chat about this shit sometimes. Uh, but I'm kind of curious what you guys feel. What's important to you? Uh, it's you know, it's information that I think we could probably share, and not everybody gets a chance to be a leader. But there are more and more chances as time moves on. And again, it's not always it's not ma necessarily manager. It's not necessarily elected official. You know, if you're if you're playing uh, if you're playing League of Legends you can lead your team to victory. If you're playing, you know, Overwatch, you can do the same thing. So video games have that too. If you're, you know, even though I'm not really in a leadership position nowadays when it comes to uh, work, you know, I still uh, I still run D&D &D games. I try to gather people together and organize people. Uh, when I'm in uh, Final Fantasy XIV and I'm in a, you know, a learning party, for a uh, for a trial that I know because I have myself with my mentor tag on. Um, when I'm in a trial that I know, um, I'll usually, you know, take control and start doing callouts and explaining how mechanics work. Um, I'll you know I'll tell people, hey, this is the Discord of my free company. Feel free to come over here. Uh, I will you know I will teach you exactly what to do. I will do the callouts for you to help you. You know, I, I'll do that stuff because I understand exactly how important it is to have someone who can lead. It takes the pressure off of you as the person and allows you to learn. Especially if you have someone who kind of, I guess, understands how people learn. I, I, don't, I don't really want to... I don't really have an interest in tuning my own horn, but... I've taught a lot of people a lot of things over the years, so I have a decent idea of what people need in order to learn a skill or something like that. So, I can kind of phrase to that. So, but th again, this is, this is a video game, so we're not talking about any extensively huge thing. It's just a leadership position in a video game. So, these are things that anyone can learn. These are not... Th these are... This is not... Uh, what's the phrase? This is not a trait, right? This is not this is not something you're born with. Yes, there are people who are supposedly born leaders. I don't believe that. I believe that leadership is a skill that literally anyone can learn. And, you know, everybody listening to this is part of that. But you have to want to learn it. It has to be something you actually care about and something you're actually going to make the attempt for. But anyone can lead. You just have to actually make the effort. This is going to be our next house. Hopefully, we're, where B's going to live. Okay, guys. That's going to be it for me. I'm going to go hunt down this, uh, this balloon here and hopefully get B as a villager in here. Um, we're going to be getting a lot more villagers. I'm probably going to end up... Yeah, you know, actually, you know what? Hold on. I take it back. Hold on. There's something else for me to do. Is this the balloon that's making so much? Yeah. The problem is these balloons, The uh, since I've gotten all the recipes, the balloons that we're seeing now are literally just um, air eggs. I'm waiting for the every five minute actual eggs to see if we can get some other recipes. Um, we do have... Hello, beautiful. Remember I said iridescence? Yeah, iridescence. God, that's beautiful. Um, I do want to go and, uh, I want to ask, 
Isabel if we have more information about our, uh, our island. So let's ask. How can you help? Talk to me about the island evaluations. Okay, so we're still at a one-star rating. Okay, so what's feedback? It's great there's not too much going on. I hope it'll stay nice and unassuming like me. There you have it. If you want feedback from anybody else, increase the population of sphere. Okay. So what they're specifically saying, I believe we've truly improved our island scenery. I continue to marvel at your skill in decoration and landscape design. We're looking to have you. And there you have it. Okay. So it seems like the major piece that we're looking for right now is just um, increase the population. Which, hey, we're working on. I have houses everywhere. But yeah, guys. So takeaways let me know what you guys feel about leadership um you know tell me tell me what makes a good leader tell me what makes a bad leader if you are someone who has been a leader uh please let me know what you took away from it or what you currently take away from it how you uh intend to get better or how you did get better um you know i'm curious it's gonna help me in my future but it will also probably help a bunch of people who are uh, actually watching these so let me know i appreciate you all and I'll see you guys next time.